Welcome to Black Talk Radio, hosted by Kristen Ayana. Listen as we discuss the latest in Black culture, Black news, and Black entertainment. What's good, y'all? It's your girl, Kristen Ayana, and welcome back to Black Talk Radio, where we discuss the latest in Black culture, Black news, and Black entertainment. Now, I'm super excited because we have Sav in the building today. How you doing? Thank you so much for joining us. How are you feeling? Feeling good. Awesome, love that, love that. I'm smoking on rappers, yeah, I got the sour. This the kind of shit make me stay up for hours. Lately, my money stacking like a tower. I'm gonna make it rain like I'm taking a shower. The shakers ain't nothing. I've been overpowered. I've been overdosing. I've been overworking. I'm fixing my crap. I won't stop till it's perfect. I'm giving these bars out for free, but it's worth it. I swear. So, for those who like may or may not know, can you tell us, like, you know, where are you from? And of course, what made you start getting into music? Yeah, for sure. So, um,. Like I said, my full name is Sav Will, uh, from Plainfield, New Jersey. How I started music, I used to always be, you know, into music growing up as a little kid. I used to always mm. do, like, church, choir. Oh, wow. Um, and, you know, school, I would be in the choir. Like, it was always in my mind, like, singing, performing, mm-hmm. rapping. I think at one point, I, I told my mom I want to be part of, like, Kids Bop. Like, I was just <laughs> always trying to do something within music. So, you know, eventually uh, in high school, I recorded, like, some funny song, you know, and then I started to do it more and more, and then mm-hmm. I kind of got, like, into it, like, just this love of just recording, and I would start writing and just, you know, got so passionate about it. just the whole thing, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of, like, how I how I came up, just, you know, listening to music, um, Kanye, Jay-Z, mm. you know, even pop music, like, Justin Bieber, like, I would listen to everybody just so oh, I could have a Oh, that's good. You're well-rounded. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know? I feel like you can learn something from everybody. everybody. Yeah. yeah. That's dope for sure. I love that. Mm. So, now, being from, like, Plainfield, Jersey, shout out Jersey. I, I love when the Jersey artists come, for okay? Sure. I'm, I, I just got to give it up to all the artists in Jersey. Mm-hmm. Um, You know, so being from Plainfield, how would you say that has, like, impacted you as an artist yeah. or just being from Jersey in general? Yeah, definitely. I feel like being from Plainfield definitely had a major impact. I mean... People don't know, but Plainfield is a very artistic city. Um, mm. All over the place, you'll see murals uh, drawn up. Um, they always have something going on with music. Like, we have a park where we have a, a concert every single summer. You know what I'm oh, saying? Wow. Every single summer. We don't miss a summer with that concert. So, um, we have a performance arts high school I went to. So, nice. we, we, we're already, you know, we we really big on just music, art, and all that. And I think that definitely played a part in, like, me being an artist today. I Got feel like... You. Apart from just, like, mainstream music, they, Mm -hmm. you know, the people around me, like, the city had an impact on what I'm doing now as far as music goes, you know what I'm saying? That's dope for sure. Yeah. Um, I know, like, Jersey, we're seeing, like, a big, like, shift in the culture and, like, the music scene here, per se. Is there, like, any Jersey artists that you like or would like to collaborate with? Nah, for sure, a lot. I mean, this one guy, I'm, I'm actually, like... I'm going to try to make a song with him for a while, but mm-hmm. his name is Henny B. He mm-hmm. probably one Dope. of the dopest guys from the city. Um, mm-hmm. Another guy named Nuke, who I've been following from a long, for a long time. Um, and then, of course, I got my guys that I've been working with, Ali G, uh, Ryu Richie, um, Juan Don. These are guys that's on my Liddy Mob team, so mm-hmm. they're from the city as well. And then, you know, there's so many. I can keep going down the list. Uh, there's a... R&B artist Indigo Mac from um, Trenton. Oh, I feel like I've heard. Yeah, she, beautiful voice. Her voice is just, like, amazing. But um, eight, uh, he's from, I can't even tell you right now. He's going to kill me when he sees this. But, like, we, we got a bunch of people in Jersey that I want to work with. And, you know, if they hopefully if they see this, they'll hear it and we can get something going. I love that. So, yeah. um, speaking of Liddy Mob, I want to get into, you know, for those who don't know what exactly that is. And I know a project was released recently. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, for sure. So uh, Liddy Mob was started by Juan Don. He's the head, I would say. He's like the the collaborator who brought us all together. And Mm -hmm. really the mission is just, you know, we started off trying to just put Plainfield on the map because Mm -hmm. most of us are from Plainfield. But as we started to gather more people to the team, um, Indigo, A, people who are not from the city, we started to see, like, hey, this is, like, a really talented group. We can actually, mm. you know, go places. Because we're doing a lot by ourselves already, but together it's kind of like, you know, we're a force to be reckoned with. Right, so right, right. we brought on, like, some producers on the team. We have a bunch of videographers who are doing videos for us. Um, nice. 
We have people who are just in the background who do like the mixing and then mm-hmm. the organizing, managing. So, you know, we're just we're really just focused on getting like our dream out there and like we know if we do it together, um, you know, um we'll we'll go farther. So yeah, the EP, um, it was a two song EP. We mm-hmm. we're planning on figure out we're trying to figure out how to do it for the longest. Gotcha. Whether we wanted to put a single out first mm-hmm. or um, you know, a big collab project. But instead we kinda said, you know what, how about we do a two song EP and then we see how they react to it. It's not mm, nothing okay. too big, nothing too small. You know what I'm saying? So Got you. Yeah, we put out that and then we actually have another single coming out April fourteenth in uh, compliments to that EP we just dropped. So dope. I love that. Yeah, I love that. Um, you said like you know together you guys are like a force to be reckoned with right, because right. I do think you know being an artist and you know being in entertainment it really does help when you have you know that community and people that you can work with. So I, yeah. I love that you mentioned that. Yeah. So now I want to get into your song, Your Flowers. Yes. Uh, we love it. Um, my interns, you. I played it for them earlier. They were really vibing to me. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about that song yeah. and, you know, like how it came about? Yo, so I was in my dorm room and I was doing some bee searching. Um, mm-hmm. This is when I used to have all my equipment in my dorm. I would bring my equipment everywhere I went. Mm. Yeah. So I kind of calmed down with that because school <laughs> is going crazy. But anyways, um... I was sitting in my room uh, just looking for beats, and then I found this one beat, and I'm like, okay, this has you know, a vibe to it. And then usually when I'm writing music, it's like I get this one line in my head, and mm. then it's the first line. You know, when I'm listening to a beat, it's just the first line, and I build off of that. So um, first line, I'll buy flowers for you and all your friends. Or I'll buy roses for you and all your friends. And I'm like, okay, that's dope. And then how can I keep going? Yeah. So. You know, I figured out the lyrics, and I feel like it was the quickest I ever wrote a verse, to be honest with you. Mm. Yeah. And then, you know, the hook came, like, the melody for the hook came, and then I'm just recording. I said, you know, let me just record this and get it out. And then I recorded it, and then I'm like, yeah, this is dope. I showed it to my roommate. He's like, yo, this this is kind of crazy. So, you know, I'm, I'm, no, I'm in my back of my mind, I'm knowing this is going to be, like, a crazy song mm-hmm. for myself. So I'm just kind of, like, trying to figure out when would be the best day to drop it. And then I said, you know what, I'll go for Valentine's Day. Right. You know, kind of put a different spin on Valentine's Day where it's mostly about being in love. How about I do something about, oh, about this dude fucking you over. You know yeah, what I'm saying? exactly. And then put it out. A lot of people loved it, performed it. Everybody loves it. <laughs> so it's, it's been on repeat for a lot of people's playlists. So I'm glad that, you know, I like you, it. No, you deserve it. It's definitely a good song. Now, you mentioned, you know, performing and that's something i want to actually talk to you about because i know you you've been performing recently so like what you know what has that experience been for you so like every artist that you know comes on the couch and i talk to them they always say like performing is their favorite part um some of them are nervous but they always say like in that moment it's like an outer body experience for sure so what is it like for you (laughs) it's definitely like outer body experience it's like you high i'm not gonna lie (laughs) You go up there and then you perform and it's like your body, your 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 mind just knows what to do. Especially when you're an artist, you've mm-hmm. done it a lot. I remember when I first started out, I was not as good at performing as how how I am now. I used to be nervous and you could see it. Mm. Now it's like I go up there and of course I pre- I prepare. You know, I, pre- I rehearse. Uh, you know, I study my own lyrics because sometimes I'll forget my own lyrics. Right. But, and then when you're up there and you just know what you're doing, it takes a lot of ease off of you. And then just the crowd's reaction to mm. the performance itself, it just brings even more like of a, you know, like just a good feeling, you know, to yourself. So, yeah, I, I love performing. It's definitely the most fun part, especially seeing everybody just vibe out to your music and stuff like that. I love that. And I'm glad and I'm glad that you said, like, you know, you were more so nervous in the beginning. But like right. now you've learned to come out of that nervousness. I'm, I'm still nervous. Like beforehand, I'll still be like having to do a little warm up, like, right. you know, loosen up a little bit, uh, kind of look to my lyrics a little bit, talk to my friends, talk to my mom. Like, yeah, you know, am I good? Do I look good? Do I, you know, <laughs> but um, yeah, for the most part, it's like when you go up there, you're good. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But beforehand, it's just the anticipation, I think. Got you, got yeah. you. 
Now you mentioned like you know your mom is here, so shout out to your mom. Hi, mama. Um, so I actually want to get into that. So you know, like you doing music, you know, how did your mom react to that? And yeah. like you know, what was that experience like? My mom has always been supportive of me when it comes to whatever I wanted to do. So I remember mm -hmm. I wanted to play sports. She was supportive. I wanted to, you know, do it was, whatever I wanted to do. It was it was always like one hundred percent. I'm behind you. You know, that's good. That's more great. so. What she was more interested in was the plan. Mm, you know, if mm -hmm. I'm going to do what I'm going to be doing, how are you going to do it? Right, exactly. You know, and then don't do it like how everybody else is, where it's like, mm -hmm. all right, you see some underground artists, they don't really have a plan. They're just putting out music and, you know, struggling to, like, mm. pay for the lifestyle of being exactly. an artist. You know, she wanted me to go to school for it, you know, get an education behind that, learn the business, mm. you know, be self-sufficient rather than trying to figure it out as you go. You no, know? I love that. So, are you currently in school for music now? Yeah, for sure. This is my last year. Okay. Yes. Congratulations. Yes. Um, so, speaking of that and, you know, just, like, learning the music business, you know, as an independent artist, and I know you have, you know, people behind you, but, like, do you have a team, per se? And, you know, what... How was that team formed, if mm -hmm. so? And, like, what has that experience been like? Yeah, so I, I would say Liddy Mob is really, apart from just being a group, this mm -hmm. is also my team as well. Because one thing is, apart from just being a team, we're, like, a family. And we mm -hmm. care about, as much as the group, each of our personal careers and stuff. Um, and then even apart from that, I feel like my family has always been super supportive. And, you know, I could call them my team as well. I don't have anything official like a manager mm -hmm. or, like you know, an agent, stuff like that. You know, I typically try to handle all that myself because, you know, there's a lot of stuff that comes with trying yeah, to hire yeah. all the people and bring them onto the team. So I'd rather I have people behind me that I trust and, yeah. you know, and go to them for all that guidance. Yeah, I definitely feel you. And I also think, too, um, I always say for artists, gain, when gaining a manager, I think it's something that has to almost happen organically right i also am a firm believer i feel like sometimes it's better when the manager comes to the artist because with getting a manager like i know i know some great managers and they really go hard for their artists right, right, right. so i think when get, gaining a manager you want someone that's going to go hard for you and that mm -hmm. really believes in you mm -hmm. so i think with due time you know i think i don't think that's something that can be forced and i don't think yeah. that's something that can be rushed yeah so i think that's a, a very good statement it takes a lot of trust yeah know, exactly i have faith in them and that they have your best interest in mind right. at the same time for sure yeah so now I want to talk a little bit about, you know, your creative process. So I know for like some artists, when they go to the studio, they need like certain people with them. Mm -hmm. They got to drink first. They got to <laughs> smoke. Yeah. I, this one artist told me that they record in the dark. <laughs> so like, what is it like for you? Yeah. Um, my creative process has changed like mm. across the years. I've been doing music for like five, six years now. So. I used to be the type to, okay, I need to smoke before mm -hmm. I, like, get into the session. I don't smoke no more. Now I drink. But even now, it's like drinking isn't, like, the best for me. I like mm. more so having, like, a natural vibe. Got you. Know? you. So um, when I when I get into the studio, typically, um, first thing I do is look for a beat. Every single mm -hmm. time I look for a beat. And it also has to just go with how I'm feeling in the moment, you mm -hmm. know. Sometimes I'm feeling happy, sometimes I'm feeling sad. Whatever the, the feeling is, is kind of what I go based off of. And then on top of that, maybe I talked to one of my friends and they was feeling bad or happy. Right, exactly. And I, you know, I'll take from their experiences and put it into my own songs, like, you know. And I'm not trying to, like, lie in my music, but it's kind of yeah, like, no, no. you know, yeah. we all understand what we be going through. Exactly. So, you know, I try to, like, encompass that into my music. So, yeah, for the most part, it's just like I go into the studio, find a beat. And then write lyrics, you mm -hmm. know, maybe I'll freestyle, you know, it it, it kind of just varies. It's never the same. Got you. Yeah. I love that, though. I think that's dope. And I think, too, like something that's beautiful about music, like how you mentioned, you'll maybe talk about your own experience or like a friend's experience. I was having this conversation with another artist, actually, too, when they came here. It's like whatever you put out or whatever you say in your music, a lot of times people can relate to that. Right. right. And I think. 
when people can relate to your music, that's what makes them like fall in love with it. Right. Because as humans, we're all going through similar situations mm -hmm. or feeling like similar emotions. Right, right. I think one thing that uh, today with music, it's not a lot of people that's making music that you can actually relate to. Mm -hmm. More so uh, party music where you can turn yeah, up. Yeah, a lot of turn TikTok, up. You know a lot of saying? turn up. But there's nothing bad about that because right. I'm the type to really get lit to that. But, <laughs> you know, I feel like if you want to create a, a a real bond to mm -hmm. like your fans it's like trying to touch their hearts and write something that's meaningful mm -hmm. so i'm always trying to look for things that's within myself that i can write about because i know somebody else is probably right. listening going through the same exact thing so definitely 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 yeah. so speaking of like you know artists being relatable and things of that nature is there any artists that you relate to like if you could collab with any artists who would it be and why so many um my favorite artist of all time mm -hmm. is j cole um, and Dreamville Fest is right Right around now. the corner. Oh, man. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's right now. Facts. Yeah, he's yeah. performing tonight with uh, Drake. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's going to be epic. Yeah, that's crazy. Jay I didn't even know. Like, Drake is coming out? All right, my bad. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> um, I wish I was there. Like, <laughs> right. But, Me too. Yeah. <laughs> J. Cole is my favorite, though. Uh, I, he put out this one song. Mm -hmm. Um can't even think of the name right now. It's so many songs. Love Yours. There we go. Oh, yeah. I have a friend that has that tatted on her. Like, yeah. literally, she loves J. Cole, too. Yeah, yeah. Love that song. It's just, like, that's the type of music that I'm talking about where it's, mm -hmm. like, it touches you and you, everybody can understand it, you know? So, um, he he's, like, kind of like the example I look at when mm -hmm. I talk about, like, being relatable, touching people's arts, not just, like, putting out music to turn up to, but, like, putting out right. music that... You can feel yeah. that you can always come back to when you're going through whatever mood you're going through. Um, he was definitely like that guy for me in high school and mm -hmm. like even now, you know. But yeah, Kendrick Lamar too, you know, his uh, last album. Yeah, like, I know. A lot of people love that project. Yeah, too crazy. Like Father Time, like the therapy, the the therapy sessions and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It was so many songs on there where I'm like, yo, this is kind of like. What I'm trying to do at the scale. If I could work with those two, those would be like the main ones. Even Drake, you know, Drake right. isn't like, you know, uh, I love Drake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I feel like he good. You know what I'm saying? He be, he puts girls in their feelings. You mm -hmm. do sometimes, you know. But like, he's I I I, I think kind of he kind of getting a little played out in my opinion. I think Drake is how could I put this? He's I want him to take a break. Right, you know what I'm saying? I want him to take a break. Um. I think he's gotten to a point where it's like he knows he's so good and he's like trying to be maybe relatable to a different type of audience in a sense. Yeah. But I just wanted to take a break because if you listen to like the his catalog from the beginning to where it is now, yeah. he doesn't. The thing is with Drake, he doesn't have to release a project every year or as often as he does. Right, right. Like look at Beyonce. Mm -hmm. You know, like people still love Beyonce and whatever but she's not releasing every year i feel like artists should know that it's okay to take breaks, take breaks yeah. like that won't make your fans dislike you mm -hmm. or take away from your stardom right right so Look but kendrick like he won a grammy and he took a break for like four years exactly so breaks are good y'all mm -hmm. is the moral of the story yeah. but mm -hmm. my final question for you if you could leave your supporters you know like your fans with like one thing to remember about you what would it be and why one thing to remember about me, mm -hmm. um, one thing I'll say is that, you know, trust in your process, for mm. sure, you know? Like, I feel like for me, I have a way or I have a path that I see for myself, mm -hmm. and I believe in it, and I'm going to keep walking down that path because I know that it's going to work, mm. and it might take longer than I planned for, right. but if I keep going, it's not going to, like just not work out it's it, it stops working out when you stop you right know? exactly so, let everybody know where they could find you follow you all that jazz all right so instagram you can follow me at mg.sav that's mg.sav twitter sav will official mm -hmm. s-a-v-w-i-l official um tiktok is gonna come up you just gotta be patient <laughs> with that but um youtube uh i think it's sav will official that's about it. I think that's everything I'm on. When I start getting more better on socials, I'll drop everything else. Maybe I'll come back for part two or something. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Well, thank you so much. Thank and we wishing you nothing but the best. All right, thank you. I appreciate it.